நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் டு யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த சேமல் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அவர் ரெனோட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி The link of the original version, the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. This is Astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. Well, in this video, I am going to explain how to find longevity and how to find the instability of the mental status with few natal charts. Let me explain the very first natal chart. The natal is Leo Ascendant. and mercury resides in leo moon resides in the second house that is virgo saturn resides in fifth house which is sagittarius rahu resides in sixth house which is capricorn mars resides in aries in its own house which is ninth house venus resides in 11th house which is gemini the ascendant lord sun jupiter and ketu resides in the 12th house which is cancer during rahu dasha and venus antar dasha and moon pratyantar dasha this native died you guys can take 2 minutes of time and can anybody explain the reason for his death you all can definitely try to predict the reason for his death you should definitely be in a position to apply the correct rules and exceptions and make predictions try to do your best to make the predictions the combination is rahu dasha venus antar dasha and moon pratyantar dasha this is when the unfortunate event happened yes already one from the audience is trying to find out well the role of marakadipati for fixed movable and dual signs the rules of vedic astrology never fail well one of my students is telling the answer rahu resides in the house of saturn which is capricorn rahu just functions like saturn and rahu resides in the 6th house to the ascendant Venus becomes Marakatipadi and Moon becomes the Lord of Laws that is Virayatipadi. And the Lord of Laws which is Moon is in the second house. It might be challenging to make predictions but you can try to do it. The deadly enemy for the native of Leo ascendant is Saturn. For the movable sign Marakatipadi is Lord of second and seventh house. For the fixed sign, Marakadibadi is Lord of third and eighth house. For dual sign, Marakadibadi is Lord of seventh house and the Lord of eleventh house. For the native of Leo ascendant, which is a fixed sign, the Lord of the third house, that is Libra, is Venus, and the Lord of the eighth house, that is Pisces, is Jupiter. The ascendant lord is in the 12th house to the ascendant and lord of 8th house which signifies longevity is in the 12th house to the ascendant house and rather saying that it is in the 12th house i would say it is exalted and combusted by the sun as well and it is also in conjunction with ketu you have to take the point in this perception the lord of eighth house and the ascendant lord have joined together with the shadow ye planets rahu and ketu and it is also aspected by mars from aries by its fourth aspect here though the lord of the eighth house is exalted it got combusted by the sun though the eighth house lord seems to be of greater strength it has connection with rahu and ketu when there is a combination of first and eighth house lords and in addition to this if there is also combustion or eclipse or eclipse dosha by joining rahu ketu then you have to be very careful in making predictions when the first house lord 
and the eighth house lord or in connection and in addition to this if the planets are combusted or eclipsed definitely there will be a deficit in the longevity death will occur during dasha and antar dasha of maraka lord and pataka lord i would like to give another example in order to explain the dasha and antar dasha that is i am going to explain another natal chart i guess this must be the natal chart of a 32 year old person the native is aquarius ascendant the ascendant lord sun resides in taurus in fourth house and it is in conjunction with sun and mercury and jupiter which is lord of 11th house and the second house resides in the 11th house which is sagittarius when there is a connection of the ascendant lord and 8th house lord and in addition to this if there is eclipse or combustion there will be a deficit in the lifespan in this natal chart sun is in taurus and ascendant lord and 8th house lord also reside in taurus in other words the ascendant lord that is lord of aquarius is in the taurus and the 8th house lord that is lord of virgo which is mercury also resides in the taurus sun has combusted both the ascendant lord and the 8th house lord that is sun has combusted both saturn which is ascendant lord and mercury which is the lord of 8th house i predicted much beforehand the death of this native he was a client who came to me almost 10 years ago during the initial phase of our predictions we try to validate many rules and exceptions from my research of many years and from my experience i find that when the lord of 8th house and the ascendant lord are in connection and they both are combusted or eclipsed by rahu ketu there will be definitely a deficit in the longevity of the person the ascendant should definitely be in good strength in order to have good longevity otherwise the longevity will not be good the strength of the ascendant lord will extend longevity he expired at just 32 years of age there are different scales of longevity that we consider the poorest longevity is 32 years and the medium is around 60 years of age and the fullest longevity is 90 or 100 years of age the native died during dasha of jupiter and antar dasha of venus i hear some answers from my students the reason is simple it is the dasha of marakadibadi and antar dasha of padakadibadi when will the venus antar dasha happen during the dasha of jupiter it happens under the later half of the dasha of jupiter that is one more point i want to mention here when a planet owns two houses then which house effect will it deliver first since jupiter resides in the 11th house that is sagittarius itself for the 11th house that is sagittarius it delivered the house effects of the 11th house during the first phase of its dasha that is during first 8 years the total number of years of jupiter dasha is 16 years during later half of the dasha of jupiter it will deliver the second house effects because jupiter first of all does the house effects of the house to which it is more connected so in this natal chart jupiter delivered the house effects of the 11th house first and then during the later half that is during the later 8 years it delivered the house effects of the second house and the second house is marakasthana and for the native of aquarius ascendant the padagadibadi is 9th house lord which is nothing but venus i don't remember where venus reside in that natal chart because he was a client whom i met many years before i remember this particular combination during dasha of jupiter 
and antar dasha of venus he expired at 32 years of age don't bring the point of aspect of saturn on the ascendant house as a factor when a planet gets combusted it loses its aspect strength sometimes even if parivartan happens it does not have aspect strength and the aspect does not work the rules of vedic astrology always apply without fail in the natal chart b you can see the ascendant lord saturn and the eighth house lord mercury or in conjunction and got combusted as well by sun in taurus and when you compare it with natal chart a the ascendant lord and the eighth house lord got eclipsed definitely dasha of padagadipadi and marakadipadi should happen to bring death to the native suppose if the native of chart b never undergoes dasha of jupiter then he will not have a deficit in longevity therefore as soon as you see the combination you should not say that there is a deficit in longevity the dasha and antar dasha should definitely be favorable in order to make this combination to be realized and he died only during the dasha of jupiter and antar dasha of venus for the first 8 years of dasha of jupiter death did not happen because he did not undergo antar dasha of padagadipadi until that time though this combination is present in the natal chart when the native died it happened only during the combination of dasha of marakadipadi and antar dasha of padagadipadi now let us come to the natal chart a rahu will behave just as the house lord and the planets that aspect rahu here in the natal chart a rahu does the job of ashtamadipadi that is jupiter because jupiter is ashtamadipadi for the native of leo ascendant rahu takes the responsibility to deliver the function of ashtamadipadi and rahu is residing in the house of saturn and consequently what does it deliver capricorn is the sixth house for the native of leo ascendant So what will Rahu deliver to the native of Leo ascendant when it resides in Capricorn? It delivers death through disease. If you have doubts you can ask me and I will definitely explain. Rahu resides in Capricorn and receives the aspect of Jupiter. Rahu Ketu spoils the Ashtamadipadi and ascendant lord. In natal chart B you see the connection between the ascendant lord and eighth house lord which were combusted and in natal chart a you can see the connection between ascendant lord and lord of the eighth house which got eclipsed there is not much difference between combustion and eclipse the only difference between combustion and eclipse is sun makes a planet combusted and rahu makes a planet eclipsed sun is the planet that has the highest light energy and rahu is the planet that has the highest dark energy i have written in one of my books that a planet will lose its energy or strength when it is in connection with a planet that is of the highest light energy or highest dark energy imagine there is a thousand watts bulb in front of me i will not be able to see any of you when there is such light energy the same logic can be applied to explain the dark energy if there are many people in a dark room let me say pitch dark room i cannot see the faces of the people so both gives the same effect the highest light energy and the highest dark energy make another planet lose its strength it makes the planet indistinct so the highest light energy is nothing but combustion so the effect of the highest light energy is combustion 
and the effect of highest dark energy is eclipse. The same concept can be brought to find the profession as well. To identify the longevity of the person, I took Lord of 8th house. When the 10th house Lord is connected, it can be used for profession. A single rule can be adapted to different situations or to different houses in order to make a selective prediction. When both the house and the significator get spoiled, you will not get the benefit. If the same is applied to 7th house, then there is no marriage. I am telling you just one rule and if you mash the rule with different houses, you will be able to make the prediction of what will be delivered by the house during its dasha and what will not be delivered during its dasha. In natal chart B, the planet got combusted and in natal chart A, the planet got eclipsed. When the Ascendant Lord and the 8th house Lord are in conjunction and are either combusted or eclipsed, there is a shortcoming in longevity. The native of Leo Ascendant shown in chart A died during Dasha of Rahu and Antar Dasha of Venus and Pratyantar Dasha of Moon. Death occurred during the respective Dasha and Antar Dasha. Is there any doubt? Shall we see the next chart? This is chart C, where the person is native of Pisces Ascendant. In the Ascendant house, Venus, Saturn and Rahu resides. And in the second house, Sun, Moon and Mercury resides, that is in Aries. And in sixth house, that is in Leo, the Ascendant Lord Jupiter itself resides. And in 7th house that is Virgo, Ketu resides. During the minor planetary period of Venus, he suffered from a disease that killed his life. What is the reason? I received many answers from my students. Venus is an exalted Virgotama status. Yes, I agree with your point about exalted Virgotama. Too much of anything is good for nothing. I have written about this in an article. But beyond that, please check whether Venus is Subhatva or Pabhatva here. Yes, Venus is Pabhatva here because it is in conjunction with Saturn and Rahu. Yes, I hear many more answers from my students. The Ascendant Lord itself is in the 6th house from the Ascendant. Yes, that is the second point. Indeed, for the native of dual Ascendant, it is good that the Ascendant Lord resides in the 6th house or 8th house to the Ascendant in a friendly house status. What sort of benefit will it bring? It will be beneficial in terms of profession. In this natal chart, though Jupiter is in the 6th house to the Ascendant, it is residing in its friendly house, which is Leo. Yet to enjoy the benefits, one should undergo the major planetary period of the Ascendant, Lord Jupiter. There is an exception for every rule. Please try to understand this. For the native of dual house Ascendant, it is good when the Ascendant Lord resides in 6th house or 8th house or 12th house, provided the Ascendant Lord resides in the most friendly or friendly house. For the native of Pisces Ascendant, it is good when Jupiter resides in the 6th house in its friendly house Leo rather than residing in the 5th house being exalted in Cancer. And in order to make further predictions, you have to check other criteria. Definitely, you have to check the Ascendant house. One important point in every natal chart is that the enemy should not be more powerful than the Ascendant Lord. Here the enemy has got more strength than the Ascendant Lord. And it is also Pabatwa. Some might have doubts that though the planet is exalted, it is Pabatwa. So what results will it deliver? When it attains Pabatwa, it loses its strength. So what will be the result? 
Now you can recall the point that one of the students told here, which is exalted Vargotama. Venus is exalted in the fourth pada of Revati. The exalted Vargotama, that too an enemy planet getting exalted Vargotama is not good at all. Too much of anything is good for nothing. The exalted Vargotama applies only for the natural benefits. It is like an Indian desert kheer. How many glasses of kheer can you drink? Hardly 4 to 5 glasses of kheer and not more than that. If you drink a pot of kheer, what would be its effect? It will definitely have adverse effects. Nothing is good when it exceeds its limits. This applies even to money. When somebody owns abundant money, then the person will lose peace in life. Even the longevity of the person does not need to be 200 years. What will happen? The person will feel the life boring and will be longing to die. The senility will definitely make them to think so. Life will be boring when somebody exceeds even 90 years of age. Anything that exceeds its limit is not good in life. Here Venus is exalted status Vargotama and Pabatva. The Lord of the 8000 addition to this status is in conjunction with Saturn and Rahu. If you understand this point, it is understanding the essence of astrology. You know, a gold mine is not the same as a diamond mine. You can find gold deposits here and there on the rocks everywhere. The diamond mine is not such. If only you find the inlet of the diamond mine, then you can reach the pipeline where you can find a lot of diamonds. Like if only you know the entry point of the diamond field, you are able to get the diamonds in the field. In the very same fashion, the entry point or the inlet of astrology is Subhatva, Pabhatva and Sukshma strength concepts. So you should not check the natal chart in a bird view, rather you have to get deeper into concepts. Here Venus is exalted and it is in conjunction with Saturn and Rahu, thus becoming extremely Pabhatva. He was born in 1968 and he was undergoing Rahu Dasha. What would have happened since Dasha of Mars and Antar Dasha of Venus? Whenever he undergoes Antar Dasha of Venus, since he is the Lord of the 8th house and moreover in conjunction with Saturn and Rahu, it will deliver a lot of diseases to the native. During its Dasha or Antar Dasha, it will deliver diseases. What is a life-killing disease? A disease that needs medicine for a long time or which cannot be cured at all. Some students say it is diabetes. No, it's not a disease. Even in astrology, diabetes mellitus is not called as a disease. It is just a disorder in which the body does not produce enough insulin, causing blood sugar levels to be abnormally high. Or sometimes it does not respond normally to insulin causing blood sugar levels to be abnormally high. It is like some people do not have limbs and some people do not have insulin protection. If it is injected and your body functions perfectly, it is not a disease. This native suffered from a disease that killed the life of the native. Well, hope you understand the natal chart. We will see the next natal chart. Is there any doubt? Well, let us go to the next natal chart. In order to predict the chart, you definitely have to check the star lord of the graha. You have to check which is the star lord for the ascendant lord and moon. During the show of Mars, this native got his mental status affected. The native is Aries ascendant. Moon, Mercury and Venus resides in Aries. Sun and Saturn resides in the second house which is Taurus. Ketu resides in the 4th house which is Cancer 
and Jupiter resides in the 8th house which is Scorpio and in 10th house Mars and Rahu resides which is Capricorn. Mars is exalted here. The instability of the mental status is also a disease. Here you can definitely check whether the ascendant lord is affected or not. What is the reason? Please tell me the reason. The first and foremost reason is yes, you are correct. The sixth house lord is in the ascendant house. But definitely there are many more reasons. Just from one point we cannot make any final prediction. When you check a natal chart, you have to check where the Ascendant Lord is, where the Rashi Lord is and what is the Star Lord of the Ascendant Lord and you also have to check where the 6th House Lord and the 8th House Lord reside and first of all, identify what is the reason they have come to check their natal chart. 99% of the people will approach an astrologer if only they have a problem. Only 1 out of 100 will come to check the talent of an astrologer. Yes, I am getting all the correct points from my students. One of my students especially is telling me the closest reason. Here the Lord of the 5th house which is the reason for thinking got affected. 90 to 95 percent of your clients will come to you because of their problems in life. And only very few people after hearing about your prediction skill who does not bother about spending money will approach you with a horoscope to check your prediction skill. When you examine such natal charts whether they have any problem you will not be able to find any. When you don't find any misery in their life or when you don't find the person is living an unhappy life and you feel the person is living a very happy life, you have to definitely ask without any hesitation the reason for their approach. You should question the reason for their arrival to check the horoscope when you see no problem in his life. The moment you ask the question, the person who wants to check your skill level will understand definitely your skill set. He will definitely say that I have just come to meet you and I have absolutely no problems in my life. Then he will just go ahead with asking about future predictions. The areas where an astrologer is liable to make mistakes are the star lord of the ascendant lord, the star lord of the Rashi and checking whether a good Dasha is experienced by the native or not. You have to identify first of all what could be the reason that your client has come to you, has approached you. The more you become experienced, the more you become famous, you will have more responsibility in society. But when you are not famous, you can just simply ask what is the reason you have to come to check the horoscope. But if you are charging a considerable amount of fee and if you ask the client what is the reason they have come for, the client will expect you to tell the reason rather opening up themselves. The client will definitely say that they can approach other astrologers who just demand only 20 rupees for their prediction. So when you charge more fees for a consultation then the clients will expect more skill set from the astrologer and the finest prediction from the astrologer. The famous astrologer Mr. Shelby told once in the conference of e -Road that if an astrologer gives a detailed picture of why the client has come and what will happen in his life much before he opens up himself then it is called to be the prediction. If the client explains everything to an astrologer and then astrologer makes certain predictions, it will be almost like counselling not a prediction. An astrologer must know what is the problem currently going on in the life of the client. An astrologer should have the capability to identify the reason for approaching beforehand and tell the client. This is where an astrologer can prove his knowledge. Mr. Shelby said if a client comes to you and says his problem and then you make a prediction, it is merely counselling. 
Of course, I too agree with his words. It's very, very true. Most of the astrologers face this challenge when their experience grows and they become famous in the society. The clients will just hold their hands closed and shut their mouths and they will not open up anything. It sounds a bit challenging, right? But the fact is, it is not a challenge at all. You can say it with 100% confidence. You have to believe in yourself, in your skill and of course you have to believe in Vedic Astrology. And you can definitely identify 100% correctly the reason why your client approached you. How to identify the reason for the approach of the client? When I thought that nobody in this lecture can find out the exact reason for the mental instability of this native, this student told me the reason that the fifth house lord, which signifies the mind and thinking, is in conjunction with Saturn. Most of the people identify the reason as Rahu because Rahu is in conjunction with the ascendant lord. I expect that you guys will tell me Rahu ascendant conjunction as a factor since you guys are beginners. But this student surprised me with the exact reason that fifth house lord is in conjunction with Saturn. And there is one more student over there who told me that the ascendant lord himself is very weak. Mars is exalted but it is in conjunction with Rahu. The fifth house signifies the mind and level of the skill you possess. The ascendant is the mind, the ascendant lord also signifies the mind. But the fifth house will indicate how the ascendant lord will behave. Where does the thought process happen? It happens in the fifth house. From where do you think? You think from your mind. The fifth house lord signifies the thought process, thinking, luck, everything. The fifth house lord should not be in conjunction with Saturn. But so far, the student has been very good. And this student told me the very right answer. Only during the Dasha of Mars, the native got affected and not before it. Until the commencement of Dasha of Mars, the native has been good. Well, what would have happened during Dasha of Mars and how this native would have been affected? Somebody says it is thighs. No, how mental instability can relate to thighs? It is completely wrong. You are connecting the body part of the house that is signified by Kalapursha. What is the connection between mental status and thai? When I asked where he was affected, it doesn't mean in which body part he was affected. Well, I hear another answer. You are correct, sir. He had a problem in his workplace. And in the workplace, can you tell me even more furthest final predictions? Yes, one of the guys said, yes, one of the students said, it is abroad. Yes, Rahu is a reason. You say that Rahu is a reason. There is one more reason for his mental instability. It is not just Rahu. Because Mars itself is a planet that is Lord of the 8th house in his natal chart. In this natal chart, the 8th house is Subhatva and Jupiter aspects the 12th house from the 8th house. And the 8th house lord is in connection with Rahu. Don't worry when you are not making these finest predictions. Whatever you said so far, being a beginner itself is commendable. When I put forward more questions, you will have more curiosity to explore the reasons for a particular event that what happened in the life of this native. This is the reason I am putting more questions forward. The 8th house lord is exalted. The Ascendant Lord is exalted. It is Mars. And the 8th house is also Subhatva by the presence of Jupiter in the 8th house. Jupiter resides in its most friendly house and aspects the 12th house as well. So this guy is as soon as Dasha of Mars started, he went abroad. Many of the clients approach astrologers while they live abroad because they miss their homeland very much and they feel homesick. They miss their parents. 
and there is lot of work tension in the workspace this guy went abroad and he got his mental status affected because of the pressure he faced in the workspace please let me know whether you understand or if you have any questions the ascendant lord which is also the 8th house lord resides in the movable sign in capricorn and during the show of mars the native went abroad and there he faced a lot of torture and his mental status got affected and he returned homeland well one of the student is asking me when he will recover and whether he will recover the karaka of the 12 bhavas definitely has to be learned among the 12 bhava karaka twa i have already mentioned when a karaka will be delivered by the house at which age it will happen let me give an example i am wearing spectacles and you too wear a spectacle and many of the people here are wearing spectacles but at what time did our eyes get defective you have to identify at which time a karaka will be delivered there are 12 houses and each house does have auspicious and inauspicious karagatwas when it will be delivered when will the event happen here in this natal chart which house is owned by sun well it is lord of fifth house where is the lord of second house positioned in this natal chart so in order to get the answer to your question you have to identify the respective houses in the natal chart i have written about this on the board that if only both the house and the karaka graha or natural significator get spoiled it delivers completely bad effects do you understand or not if you have any doubts you should not hesitate to ask me we have not talked about the dasha of venus so far check out the status of the moon which signifies the mind which is a natural significator of the mind the moon is heading towards amavasya so you have to understand from my videos that when he will recover and you have to find it out mars is the ascendant lord and rahu is a dark planet and it masks the ascendant lord the eighth house lord which is mars is in connection with rahu the natural significator moon is also affected because it is heading towards amavasya and who is the star lord of this moon it resides in the nakshatra whose star lord is ketu sometimes the bad effects of rahu will be delivered through ketu i have written about this in an article so when he will recover you have to tell the answer yes you are correct during the jupiter dasha he will recover or you don't need to even wait for dasha of jupiter it will happen even at the later phase of the rahu dasha he will recover during the later phase that is the later 9 years of the rahu dasha he will have completely recovered by that time and when will the worst happen to this nadir during which antar dasha it will happen anybody can tell me yes you are correct that during antar dasha of mercury and dasha of rahu he will face the worst in his life yes you are correct during antar dasha of mercury and dasha of rahu he will face the worst in his life because mercury is the planet that will deliver diseases to this native because it is the lord of the 6th house for the native of aries ascendant mercury is a dead enemy and it is a lord of the 6th house if only the native gets over the dasha of rahu and antar dasha of mercury he will start to recover there will be complete recovery after this antar dasha of mercury i hope you all understand these four natal charts and if there are any doubts please write it in the comment section of this video and please write your feedback to astro.writetous@gmail.com thank you